Hello and welcome to our inaugural Emerging CFO Future Finance Leaders Conversation. I'm Jeff Colvin, Senior Editor at Large at Fortune. Uh, in this series, we'll explore what chief executives are looking for in their finance leaders. We'll also dive deep into the changing nature of the finance chief job and talk about the most sought after skills and uh, expertise needed to climb the finance ladder in any organization. Our theme today is just that, stepping out of your finance comfort zone. Today's session is the first in a series of three emerging CFO discussions in which you'll have the chance to engage with and learn from CFOs across industries. We're delighted to bring you this in partnership with Workday. In a moment, I'll kick off today's conversation along with my co-chair and writer of Fortune's very popular CFO daily newsletter, Cheryl Estrada. We thought a great way to start off today would be to share with you some highlights of our CFO collaborative gathering a couple weeks back. Uh, started at NASDAQ in 1993 as in the, in the, on the business side, writing product plans for our trading business, trading products. Um, and then became a product manager of um, several trading and data products, and then became the head of our data products division, um, and then became head of strategy and then CFO. So uh, because of the business experience I had um, running our data products and, and really honestly partnering very closely with tech on the trading and data data systems that I was in, in really involved in, I, I became very familiar with technology, but I'm not a technologist myself. I think a lot of the skill sets that CFOs have are quite relevant to being the, the person who harnesses the data within, within an organization. Um, so it's not so much that you need to know that it's in Java, you know, or, you know, or, or you don't need to know SQL. You have, might have people on your team who know SQL, but you have to know how to kind of unpack a process and repack it up in a way that gets you a different conclusion. And, um, and I, I think that's, um, that's why the CFO has become such an critical role. So you have to start with what questions are you trying to answer? What decisions are you trying to make? Then you look at all the data and you have to make sure that you're parsing through it to say, let's stay to the, true to the North Star and make sure we're really focusing on these questions and these answers and let all the other data go for a while. And as you start to ask yourself more questions and need more answers, you can pull in more data. But that's how we've, that's how we've approached the problem. And with that, uh, let's get right into it and meet our discussion leaders today. And to the discussion leaders, when I say your name, please give us a wave so everyone watching will know who's who. Uh, they are Tammy Romo, Executive Vice President and CFO of Southwest Airlines. Uh, Christina Salem, Chief Financial Officer of WWE. Yeah, Tanya Secor, Global Chief Financial Officer of RGA, and Harmeet Singh, Executive Vice President and CFO, Levi Strauss and Company. With that, let's bring in our panelists, discuss how they've stepped out of their finance comfort zones on the way to becoming CFO. Uh, Gerald, get us started. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here with everyone. Uh, rising leaders need to master much more than the traditional skills of finance. Tanya, how has your various professional experiences in creativity, technology, and finance contributed to your performing the role of CFO? Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, thanks for having me today here. Um, so as, as you and I have discussed in the past, um, I was raised by an artist and an accountant. And I did choose a, a career in finance, although in college I majored in art history. And how has that really influenced me? I'd say during the first couple decades of my career, the art history background and that embracing of creativity really wasn't a big part of my professional role. But then I was CFO of Business Week um, and really brought into um, that organization at what was a very difficult time in 2008, of appreciation and understanding of the writers and the creators and the innovation process. And now, as I joined RGA, a global innovation digital agency, um, I am embracing this, these innovators and these producers and these designers who are really forging the forefront of, of transformation of digital strategy for our largest clients. And as a CFO, 
you need to have a broad wingspan and technical skills. And I bring my software experience as a CFO to this human, very human and professional services organization. Uh, but it's with an appreciation for the, the unpredictability and the organicness of, of that creative process. And that's really what ultimately will be driving profit, continued profitable growth for our agency. So Tanya, it sounds like every position that you had up until now prepared you for what you're doing today in different elements. So that's wonderful. You. Uh, Christina, your career has ranged from technology investor to CFO of WWE, a huge entertainment company. How did your various experiences prepare you for your current role? Thanks, Carol, and thanks again for having me here. Yeah, I, I don't think I really come from central casting. I've only been at operating companies for eight years, and I entered at the CFO level. So when folks ask me, you know, what's the ladder to CFO, I don't have a lot of advice to give. I don't think in terms of ladders, I think in terms of experiences and collecting experiences across your career. So you're right, for the first nearly 20 years of my career, I was a technology investor. And what that created was the ability to look at all different kinds of companies within technology, hardware, software, consumer-oriented, business-oriented, enterprise-oriented. And it really gave me a, a skill set, a toolbox where I could kind of look at any problem and be able to break it down into the essential questions that we're trying to solve and then look at the work that we're doing across the company and is any of that work actually looking to solve those problems and then oh what are the financial results the financial outcomes of all that the strategy the work we're doing results in some numbers right and so my it, it wasn't a ladder that I was going up, but just collecting, you know, looking at hundreds of companies and meeting with hundreds of CEOs and CFOs over the years to kind of have pattern recognition of what some of those uh, problems and opportunities might be. That's a great point, pattern recognition um, that kind of transcends any uh, role, it seems. Um, Armit, uh, you're a seasoned financial executive are there skill sets that you acquired working in different industries? You've worked in hospitality, rest, restaurant, travel, retail. Can you share that with us? Sure. And uh, again, thanks for having me um, as part of this wonderful panel. Um, I'd say, um, you know, I spent half my professional life outside the U.S. and half uh, within the U.S. I'm educated overseas. I'm a chartered accountant um, and, uh, and grew up in a family uh, that was largely made up of engineers and politicians. And so I'm the first finance uh, person. But I'd say a couple of things. Um, you know, my career spanned five different industries. I worked in private companies and public companies. Uh, I spent 50% of my professional life overseas. And, you know, as I say fondly, I've never done the same job I've done before other than this job because I was here for it at Hyatt. Um, and... Um, the couple of things that have worked for me, uh, one, I didn't think 35 years ago I'd be sitting in the U.S. and CFO of a wonderful company like Levi Strauss or a wonderful company like Hyatt. So, you know, don't plan your career. Just take it as it comes. Uh, it's, 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 it's important. People bet on me, so I do bet on people. Uh, you know, I think it's important uh, that you bet on talent, you develop talent. And um, I, think, uh, I think the thing that has worked for me beside the diversity of experience is the fact that, you know, as CFOs and finance people, it's very important to think business first, function later. You know, I have a line that says that uh, in finance, you see everything. And the question you've got to ask yourself is, can you impact everything? And if the answer is, so the choice is yours, you know, and, and that's, I think, critical because the specter or the, or the breadth of what you can see is amazing in this function. Thank you, Armit. That's very insightful. Uh, Tammy, uh, as a 30-year seasoned uh, veteran at Southwest, you've held many uh, positions within the company. How has that experience contributed to your role as CFO? Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, too, for uh, having uh, me here today. It really is a pleasure, and it's great 
uh, being here with such a fantastic uh, panel. Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, first of all, I've been very blessed to have such a wonderful career here uh, at Southwest. Uh, coming into Southwest, had a very strong uh, accounting uh, background. And uh, really, it's been a journey for me here at Southwest. Really never focused uh, on uh, becoming the, the CFO. Uh, if uh, you had asked me uh, 30 years ago uh, what my goal was, that certainly was not on the list. Uh, it's always been uh, just uh, really focusing on uh, the, uh, the, the job that you're in, doing it the very best that you can, and uh, always uh, working uh, really hard to make sure that you're turning out excellent uh, results. Uh, but having, obviously, the opportunity to, uh, to uh, work in so many roles has given me, really, a breadth of knowledge, and uh, that certainly uh, helped uh, with uh, the decisions that we have to make uh, as a company. Uh, I'm a very much a people person. Uh, our founder, Herb Kelleher, you know, said, the business of business is people, and I am a huge believer in that, and uh, really uh, focus more on uh, the development of our team and uh, making sure that, you know, we have the right skill, set, skill sets, we're developing our folks so that, uh, you know, we, we're making the, the most informed decisions that uh, we can. Uh, but, 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 sh but certainly having uh, various roles uh, over my career here has just been uh, invaluable. And I would just say to all of the uh, leaders uh, listening here, uh, you really do need to uh, be ready and embrace uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, and uh, I, uh, along my career, uh, I, I, uh, I, I was always very fortunate in that I had leaders who believed in me and uh, that gave me the confidence to step into those new roles along the way. And uh, certainly that's what I want to foster with all of uh, our leadership uh, team and all of our uh, up and coming uh, superstars. It's just, you know, really believe in yourself and be willing to step into uh, that new role and, uh, you know, maybe uh, learn, uh, be open to learning uh, new, um, new things that are really outside of what you really grew up uh, doing. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, you all have unique career paths and you're at the same position and you bring all of that experience to your role. So, so that's great. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Jeff for the next question. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Cheryl. Harmeet, I wanna ask you something and others on this same thing. Um, the subject of technology came up from the very beginning. Adina Friedman in that uh, video was talking about it. And when you just take a step back and look at the technology that's now available to the finance function, uh, it's transformative or it's potentially transformative at least. Um, but how have you dealt with it? Harmeet, I want to ask you first. Uh, I don't know what your background is in technology, but somehow you've got to think of the optimal way to apply these incredible tools now available to you. How are you thinking about that? Yeah, the, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's, um, it's an important topic. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've been lucky to have the CIO report to me now for the last two decades. Um, and I think the CFO-CIO relationship is a great relationship. Um, I'm not a technocrat, I'm just a business person. And I think uh, where the relationship really, you know, one plus one is actually equal to three, is it helps drive commercially driven technology dr uh, decisions. And, um, you know, and so my view of the world is technology changing very fast. Uh, Levi Strauss is a company that's been around 160 plus years, but the world's evolving and, you know, we are spending now two thirds of our capital on technology. And, um, you know, and, and I like to innovate. Um, for example, uh, we today have 28 bots, you know, uh, doing transactional work. And that's led to productivity saving of 600 hours. And what it does is it allows me to upskill talent across the organization, plus, you know, 
uh, allow people or enable people to do different things, um, you know, things that are more analytical versus more transactional. I think um, technology is, uh, is very critical uh, in we're investing a lot in data, science, machine learning. We just did a boot camp on machine learning. We thought we needed uh, 30, 40 people. Uh, the demand was so strong. We got 600 people. And so now we've decided to, uh, you know, do a couple of boot camps uh, uh, during the year. But there is a desire to upscale. Technology can really help. Technology can drive productivity. And I think it, uh, it's a way of connecting with the consumer, the customer, in our case, retailers, and the employees in a very different way because everybody is digitizing the experiences. And technology can be that. A vehicle. So the CIF CFO relationship, I think, uh, is great. And CFOs allocate resources, and this is one way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big decisions to be made, uh, for sure. Uh, Tanya, similar question. Uh, uh, Harmeet mentioned something that comes up in every company, which is, does the CIO report to this CFO? You see it both ways. Uh, I wonder what it is at uh, RGA, and also how you are trying to optimize the incredible technology opportunities that you have. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Jess. Jeff. You probably saw me nodding. Uh, or meet some of the things you said really resonated with me, which is, you know, I believe, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the past, technology was um, counterintuitive to humanity, right? Right, technology was replacing jobs in the United States, et cetera. Our, 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 our economy has changed. And especially with the pandemic, we at RGA believe that technology is the complementary and a facilitator to a more human future. Um, and examples of that work is, is it's in our work that we do for clients. It's in the way that I approach my role. You know, for example, during the pandemic, we built a, uh, a stadium for Verizon completely virtual within Fortnite. We took the biggest, you know, the biggest in-person, people couldn't be together. You know, 40 million people couldn't be together. Uh, you know, 40 million people use Fortnite, but you know, hundreds of thousands of people couldn't be together for the Super Bowl. We created this virtual stadium to bring people together in this experience. Um, I think that applies to our clients. I think that also applies to the work that we're doing. Um, I would say um, I'm still new at R RGA, but I've been really blown away. I see the technology function does not report into finance. I think that's unusual, but I uh, really inspiring to hear how that can create synergies. Um, I work very closely with our COO and across RGA, we've built an internal homegrown solution to drive efficiencies to match the people that we have across the globe to the work that and the creative work that needs to be produced uh, because it is very fluid, it is very dynamic and we're trying to harness the best of our people. It also helps develop the talent and uh, career of our people. So we become, not only are we doing great work for clients because we are making that match of which clients to work on and which specialized skills are need, but it also makes people happier as we you know, develop and enhance their career by a dynamic breadth of, of creative experiences. Yeah, and just one follow-up there, what's uh, your own, uh, background with technology. How knowledgeable do you feel that you have to be? Um, I, I would. I think there's a consistent theme on this panel. Um, I am not a, a technocrat. However, I did spend a decade in software as a service, um, uh, having worked for uh, metadata solutions and, and data miner and and data and information companies like McGraw Hill. Um, I do. So I, you know, I haven't. Um, while I haven't deployed uh, R RBA, robotic process automation, to the extent that uh, Harmit has, um, I have launched um, our e-commerce practice um, at Reprise. Um, and um, I've been doing some really interesting things, leveraging my software background and facilitating the organization to invest in AI to help uh, in, in, at IPG to help accelerate using AI to, to, to facilitate the creative process, um, which is fascinating. And I think we're just on the cusp of, of that revolution. It's actually amazing how much progress we can make in the agency business to, to, to systematize and um, automate uh, rote human tasks. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I'm with you on that. Uh, we're gonna see enormous leaps uh, in the next few years for sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tammy, briefly, uh, we, we've, we've heard uh, two CFOs talk about this. 
how does any of that resonate with you? How would you have answered the things I just asked? Oh, yes. Uh, no, it, it, it completely resonates. Uh, technology does not report to me, but I work very closely uh, with uh, our uh, CIO. We worked together uh, for many, many years and uh, also work uh, with her uh, entire uh, management team. Uh, so we really are uh, tied at the hips uh, in so many respects. And uh, even more broadly than that, uh, work very closely and collaboratively with our chief operating officer and our chief uh, commercial officer uh, as well uh, to really drive uh, solutions uh, that uh, make uh, Southwest Airlines better. You know, obviously being an airline, we're heavily dependent uh, on technology. So it's uh, integrated and uh, pretty much everything that we do. Uh, so uh, even though uh, technology wasn't my background, uh, you, you had to have a working knowledge to be successful and uh, you uh, have to work um, uh, across uh, the entire department because uh, everything is uh, so integrated. And um, within my team, uh, I do, um, under my umbrella, I have corporate strategy uh, as well as uh, innovation and data analytics. So we work very closely with our technology team, you know, to make sure that we have our um, data, you know, organized in a way that uh, we can uh, get the use that data to get the insights um, and information that we need uh, to, you know, help us make good informed uh, business decisions. And I do think an important part of that too is uh, making sure that uh, you really, you, 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 you focus in on the data that you need versus a quantity of data. It's really the quality of data that you're looking for. Uh, and also you wanna make sure that you're uh, working together to, to um, to deliver uh, solutions in uh, as quick a, as, as quick a time as possible. So speed uh, is really, really key. But um, similar to the other panelists within with the even in the back uh, 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 back accounting uh, office, you know we're implementing uh, bots as well, and we've really pushed on that. And I and, and, and I do believe that was accelerated as a result of the pandem pandemic. Um, we're uh, looking for ways that we can you know take those more routine tasks, automate those, use robotics, use AI, so that we can uh, free up uh, all of our very talented folks time so they can focus on the analytics and the insights uh, to really um, continue to uh, drive a success. Um, I'll mention that uh, Southwest is celebrating its 50th uh, anniversary this year. So we're very focused on what are those insights that we need uh, to drive a success, the same success that we've had and more over the next 50 years. Yeah, well, and congratulations. Uh, it's a record of success that uh, we don't have to go into, but I don't believe there's any other airline in the world that can match it. Um, Thank you. Uh, Christine. I agree. Uh, yeah, well, of course you agree, but in any <laughs> case, yeah, <laughs> it, it is astounding. Uh, Christina, what's your, your level of tech, technology knowledge and how did you acquire it? Uh, keeping in mind that most of the attendees uh, with us today are aspiring finance people. They, they want to know what they're going to need to know and what they need to do in order to acquire that knowledge. Well, my knowledge in technology has really been acquired over 30 years as a technology investor and then as an operator in technology companies. So I wish I could had a really easy answer for folks. But what I would say is, you know, currently the CTO of WWE and the head of data analytics of WWE report up into me. Um, but previously, and when I was CFO of Etsy, um, only data analytics reported up into me. Uh, Etsy is very much an engineering-led organization. So it really depends on what kind of organization you're in. At WWE, we're not a technology company, we're a content production company. And so we use technology to um, enable fast business decisions and help optimize our content production. Um, so when it depends on what kind of company you're in, in terms of the kinds of experiences you can get. 
Uh, when I was at Etsy, for example, I enrolled in our engineering boot camp uh, just to get a sense of what it meant when engineers were telling me that they're pushing code and that code was driving revenue. I didn't understand exactly what that meant. I took a SQL class to understand what my data scientists were saying when they were uh, using SQL to, to, to um, enable data inquiries. Uh, so I think there's lots of ways across an organization that you can get um, get experience in technology. But the great thing today is that technology is everywhere. It's almost quaint to talk about technology like it's this separate thing. I think one of our panelists said that it's technology enables all of her business. Um, and that's just true. You don't have to think about it as this separate thing that you have to do. Maybe 20 years ago, it was a department in the corner. It now permeates every aspect of your business and every aspect of the finance function. So there's lots of opportunities to learn. Yeah, and that's a great point. I mean, uh, the, everyone is conversant with technology and increasingly so. 130 years ago, companies had a vice president in charge of electricity. Uh, we, we don't have those anymore because we don't need them. Uh, Cheryl, back to you. Thanks, Jeff. We want to bring in some of your questions and comments uh, for starters. I want to invite Barbara Larson, Senior Vice President, Accounting, Tax, and Treasury at Workday, who had a question for our panel. Barbara, please turn on your camera and unmute. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Appreciate you taking my question. Um, this is a great discussion. It's wonderful to hear um, all your different journeys to CFO and this entire topic around technology definitely resonates with me. So during our last fortune meeting with CFOs, um, one of the big takeaways from the discussion was that CFOs are getting really deep into technology. We've talked about that today here too. So taking charge of things like algorithms and data science teams, and even uh, Gartner recently said some of the new finance competencies are really around familiarity with things like RPA software, coding acumen, even bot governance. So I'm curious from each of you, how do you think about preparing your teams to have these kinds of skill sets going forward? I can... Uh, try and um, uh, help here. Um, you know, the one of the skills that I think is important uh, for all leaders is listening. And my exposure into AI and and the wonderful world of RPA really started about four or five years ago. I was visiting. We have outsourced our, our services to a technology firm. I was visiting their shop floor, and I remember this younger person uh, who's fairly lower in the organization come up uh, to me as I was watching, I was walking uh, the floor saying, I've got some exciting news. I want to show you this RPA. So, uh, you know, and he had developed this algorithm um, and, uh, uh, and showed the, how the RPA works. So that was one instance I've said, okay, there's something here. Uh, you know, I went across and there's somebody was working on an algorithm that improved financial forecasting. And I said, there's something here. So I brought it to the team and I said, let's do our, let's you know, ex explore RPS, let's explore uh, financial fo forecasting algorithms. And um, I would say there was a lot of resistance. People felt that jobs would be replaced. Uh, people felt that, um, you know, it would come in the way they were other work. So the way we approached it was we started small. I said to everybody, we'll help upskill you. Okay. We're not replacing jobs, but we will help upskill you. Um, and we will test our way into it. Uh, and, um, you know, three years ago, I thought by now we have 90 bots. We have 28 because it's, it takes a while to convert. Our, our algorithm for financial forecasting, I thought we'd probably have the world on it if we have one division on it. Uh, and so my point is we have to test, learn and scale. And you have to work with folks by bringing them into your thinking and then learn as part of the process. And it's only now I'd say we are, you know, we're taking it to the organization. We just had a meeting with the exec executive team on RPS and we said, 
here is a technology that helps drive productivity. And during the pandemic, as you know, there's a lot of stress in the organization. People are working uh, late hours and long hours. And this is one way for us to help folks get more product productive. And uh, so that's how we're unlocking it. So I'd say be patient, test and learn, and take your time. That's great. Thank you. I think one of the things that finance teams struggle with is insularity. Um, whereas other departments might be super open, like if you're in marketing or sales, or if you're in data analytics or engineering, you're constantly reaching out to your counterparts in related industries to find out what they're doing and find out what the best practices are, the challenges that they have, and try to learn from each other beyond your own company. And what I've found in finance teams, both as a CFO or as an audit chair or as an investor, is sometimes finance teams just stay within themselves. And so as a finance leader, I, I struggle with pushing ideas to my team and instead try to encourage them to reach out and create their own networks and bring to me what are some of the best ideas to really learn from each other. Um, it's a great way of creating almost like a competitiveness amongst your, uh, amongst your teams in terms of innovation and wanting to be the best in class finance team in their in, in our industry or related industry and really then take up leadership like hey I heard that this team is using adaptive software for forecasting and we're using this other thing maybe it's better for us um, to really encourage innovation from within rather than it having be just something that comes from the top seat in the organization um, thanks Christina just uh, thought I would add um, a similar, somewhat similar to Harmony. We really started small here uh, at Southwest. Uh, and I think part of the success certainly is bringing in the right leaders. And, uh, in, 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 and I think starting out small, doing it more kind of homegrown, if you will, and showing what the benefits is uh, will, uh, will 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 invite others uh, in because they will want that same sort of success. Uh, but we uh, really took the approach here that we wanted to make sure that we did have good governance around uh, these new technologies, uh, particularly um, you know, our RPA. So uh, we really um, have a team that is working very tightly together. Uh, our controller, uh, our uh, head of supply chain, and uh, partnering with uh, our uh, head of innovation, uh, as well as uh, our continuous improvement team, really working in concert together to make sure that we have a good framework and a good governance structure as we kind of start small with plans to continue to uh, grow this throughout the organization. And an important part of, uh, of, of this journey has been showing that there is value and uh, in terms of doing a, a task more efficiently uh, and uh, also freeing up time to work on, uh, you know, more, um, more value added uh, analytics. So uh, as a result, our teams have really embraced it because we've been out there communicating uh, to uh, all of our folks that uh, here's what we're trying to accomplish, and it's, it was certainly helpful uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so uh, we we were in a position to where we we really couldn't bring on a new resources, so we were able to use uh, uh, RPA to. Um, uh, to, to help us uh, take care of, you know, all the various um, uh, activities that uh, we needed uh, to uh, make sure that were handled. I'll just give you one example. Uh, with the pandemic, uh, we were, uh, we, we, we had a surge in refunds as an example. So we were uh, able to automate uh, some of the activities to help us uh, handle the volume of transactions without having to uh, bring on uh, new resources. So that's just one, one example. Um, another example was we just recently put in a, a, a brand new uh, maintenance re record keeping system. We were uh, able to uh, automate uh, some of the um, 
uh, within our uh, technical operations, we were able to automate uh, some of the activities so that, you know, again, we're freeing up a valuable time uh, to work on, um, you know, really trying to um, solve problems and add value. So, uh, I, I really like the approach that we've taken because for, for me and my seat, I know that we have a good framework and um, we, we've demonstrated that it's successful, that the value's there. And uh, we have um, an ESG, uh, which actually is much broader than just our uh, kind of finance umbrella. We've got leaders across our uh, commercial team and our operational teams who are coming in and really just sharing ideas and uh, going through uh, really sort of a business case, if you will, to see what, uh, uh, what areas we wanna invest in. And, um, and, and it's really done collaboratively. And we're, we're finding that um, really all of our leaders across the company are embracing it. So I'm really excited uh, uh, about where we're taking this, but we wanna do it in a way that um, is, um, methodical and um, that uh, is is really uh, truly bringing value because that's the only way that it's going to be successful uh, over the long term. That's great. So kind of a common theme, start small, build on your success. And I really like the, the one concept you talked about, this whole continuous uh, improvement versus something that you do and, and move on to the next thing. So great, thank you. At this time, I'm gonna bring in a question from uh, an audience member. Uh, who builds your bots, finance, IT, consultant, or other? Uh, it's, uh, so you have to finance or, you know, in customer service, whichever way, so you have to def the, define the commercial process, but we use automation anywhere uh, that helps build that bot. And we've got, um, you know, as I said, um, a tech, um, outsourced technology group that also helps us. So I think the combination is critical and you have to test and learn. So that's how the BART is built. Uh, and um, it has to start with the commercial definition of what you're trying to get out of it. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for a panelist of if one person would like to answer this in the sake of time. Uh, We've seen throughout the pandemic that soft skills were important in uh, reaching out to employees. As in the role as CFO, how do you think that continues going forward? To so anyone who would like to answer this question. Um, I'll take that if only because I started as a CFO in the middle of a pandemic at WWE. So I literally have not met 90% of my team in person and soft skills have been so it's so just primarily the most important thing I can do to be effective in the organization. Um, I can't dazzle necessarily folks with my acumen, my finance acumen if I can't get a, get a, a feeling of connection through the screen. Um, and I think that as, as we move forward, what uh, has made it, it, what has made CFOs effective during this time is a sense of accessibility above and beyond what normally would be applicable. Uh, because there are unique problems and challenges that have come up and how has the CFO and, and, and the related finance team really been a partner, a sounding board, um, an advocate for uh, those challenges that have arisen. So um, I feel like we're coming out, finance organizations, if they've successfully man, um, maneuvered this very challenging time, are coming out even more connected to the broader organization and continuing those relationships. In the end, that is what it's about, right? We're in the business of people. I think that's what Tammy was, uh, to paraphrase Tammy's founder, and continuing those relationships and building on the, those soft skills as we move out of the pandemic and back, um, back to being together um, will be continue to be primarily the most important skill set a CFO can have. Thank you so much, Christina. That was very insightful. And um, I think it's a great way to end our uh, CFO collaborative event. Uh, thank you again to our fabulous panelists and thank you to our audience for joining us today. And a special thanks to our partner Workday. Stay tuned for details on our next emerging CFO conversation that will be taking place October 28th. Until then, have a wonderful summer and take good care. <laughs>